what's causing your depression. This video will explore possible root causes for depression and of course, how to begin to heal. To get started, we have to understand a new science, a new science that shares the wisdom that we are not our genetics. For a very long time, we believed if you genetically were past the gene for depression, you had no choice. Inevitably, you would get those symptoms, you would get that disorder. We now know that genetics absolutely play a role. However, so does our environment or the choices that we're making day in and day out. For more information, you can visit my previous video, You Are Not Your Genes. So let's talk about how this applies to depression. So common causes of depression are actually trauma and nervous system dysregulation. When we are overwhelmed, our nervous system can go into a state that I simply call shutdown. It's actually a state of parasympathetic activation when we have symptoms that very much mirror the symptoms of anxiety. We can feel listless. We can feel like we have no energy at all, no hope. We can even feel numb to our emotions. And again, these symptoms stay with us. This dysregulation lives in our nervous system well beyond the time or the event of the trauma, which means that some of us might be living in that state of shutdown from an experience years earlier, yet our body still is dysregulated, causing the symptoms that we end up calling depression. This is incredibly important. If we can understand that it's our nervous system that's causing these symptoms, we can begin to activate our nervous system in a way that will help us resolve the symptoms of depression. Other factors that might be contributing to our symptoms of depression are our lifestyle choices we're making daily. What do we mean when we say lifestyle? First, we mean nutrition. What are we eating? We now understand that our gut plays an incredibly important role in our, not only our physical wellness, but also our mental and our emotional. Our gut is the first place where our body gets to absorb the nutrients from the food that we eat. Even more problematically, many of us are eating food that causes damage to our very thin gut lining. And it pokes holes in it is a way to think about it. And what happens through those holes for some of us is toxins begin to distribute through the body. And our body then identifies that material as toxins and it activates our immune system causing inflammation. The issue becomes when that inflammation, as it does for most of us, travels up to our brain. Our brain can become inflamed and damaged in the same way that our gut did. And when our brain becomes inflamed, we can suffer the symptoms that very much feel like depression. We're talking about our gut for another reason, because of the food that we're eating. We need food as humans that are high in certain nutrients. One nutrient that's been, as of recently, very much implicated as a cause of depression is something called SAME, S-A-M-E. This nutrient works in conjunction or as a team member to two other nutrients, to our B vitamins and our folate. All three of those together, when we don't have enough, we might again suffer the symptoms of depression. So if we're not getting nutrients, and if we're not getting those particular nutrients, we might be struggling with what feels like depression. Sleep is another area we want to explore. If we're not sleeping enough, if we're sleeping too much, all of these factors might be contributing to our mood and to how we feel. So does movement. For some of us, when we feel depressed, activating quick movements, stimulating our musculature body can help increase our stagnant energy and can help resolve the symptoms of depression, as can our breath. For a lot of us who feel depressed, we're actually barely breathing at all. And if we are, it's very shallow, even very constricted. We might even be hunched barely getting the breath into our body, into our lungs that we need. Learning how to activate or stimulate our breath through a quick <laughs> breathing pattern can help us similarly stimulate our body's energy, 
helping resolve those symptoms of depression. A final area that we want to explore are our hormones. Women who are premenstrual, who are postpartum, who are perimenopausal, all of those fluctuations that happen for some of us monthly contribute to our mood, to our energy. Some of us who don't have regulated hormone levels generally or during those times of the month or post labor might be suffering with symptoms of depression. Again, all related to those underlying dysregulation in our hormones. So how do we begin to do the work? As always, we definitely don't want to change our life from top to bottom. We don't want to do something different in all of those areas starting tomorrow will overwhelm ourselves. The best path forward is picking one small daily promise in one of those areas. For some of you, it might be paying attention to what you're eating. It might be learning how to move our body in a more stimulating way or breathe in a more stimulating way to help move that stagnant energy, help lift our mood and our symptoms of depression. I'd love to hear from those of you out there who have been on this journey to heal your depression and also those who are new to it. What is the number one tool you found most impactful on your journey of healing your depression?